Well, good day, guys. My first hiking video, so we'll see how we go on this uh, new Epic Adventures channel. I have driven out. It is, what's today? Today is Saturday the 14th of November. So Melbourne or Victoria lockdowns will finish. So I've come out here to Lerderdurg Gorge, which is a couple of hours out of Melbourne. And I'm going to do an overnight hike. I've got my gear in the back. I, uh, I think I've got everything I'm going to need. It's about a 26 kilometer round hike. So my plan is to do 13 kilometers out camp and then 13 kilometers back in. I'm hoping everything goes smoothly. My pack is a little bit heavier than I thought I was. Uh, it was going to be. I did a 10 kilometer practice hike last weekend with 14 kilos. That was with water, everything. I just basically weighed it up the bag. And uh, today I've got everything in it, including water. I know people say, oh, you measure it with a base weight without food and water in it, but uh, I didn't do that. I just put it all in together and it's actually 18 kilos. <laughs> so 18 kilos for the whole lot, the whole kit. And uh, so 18 kilos is probably about 36, 40 pound. I'll work it out and I'll chuck it on the screen uh, for the whole pack. So yes. All right, we are going to get ourselves uh, on the road here and uh, see how this first hike goes. Let's go. kilograms of uh, weighty goodness. Oh. So I've brought rain jacket, not 100% sure, we might get rain tomorrow. Today's supposed to be sort of scattered cloud and 21, and what is it now? 20 degrees at the moment. Tomorrow though, 31 possible showers at some stage, so I'm not 100% sure. I've got my rain jacket just in case, I've got my bivy, got my uh, hammock and all that gear in the bottom, food, everything. As I said, 18 kilos. We are going to have some fun. Now, I just need to find where this trail actually begins. So I found this trail on all trails. Um, shout out to, I think it's Phil Harvey. He was the bloke that I, uh, I found one of his, um, what have I got there? Oh, it's water from that. I found here this trail on, uh, on his page. So I thought I'd uh, give it a go. There is probably going to be at least one water crossing in it. And I'm not sure how that's going to go. We haven't had any rain this week. But we will wait and see whether or not it turns into a challenging situation. So, alright. Let's go find this uh, hike, hike head, hike pad. What do you call it? Hike trail? Trailhead. Trailhead. All right, so I figured out where the trailhead is. And uh, so the car's up here, we're at Mount, I'll check the sign down here, but you'd like to think I've got pretty good phone reception, wouldn't you? I, uh, as I was gonna say, I looked around, I'm actually using the All Trails app. I've got this phone for recording, so all the vlog footage, footage is gonna be on the phone. And I've got my old phone, which has got the All Trails app on it, and all the offline maps, so maps on both. But I've got to go back down here to the road and uh, head back along the road. So, got a good idea where I'm going. First bit is downhill, which I'm guessing is a good thing, but it is a beautiful day. You should have seen it. I probably should have taken a bit of footage up there. I, uh, there's, maybe I'll be able to see it when we get around here. Let's just flip around, guys. Go. Out over this way, there's actually a whole lot of uh, windmills like the big wind turbines and uh, if I get down here and you can still see them I'll see if I can get a bit of footage of it actually they might be back around this way a bit more but uh, yeah you should have seen it a couple of windmills out this way as you can see it is a beautiful day we go down here turn right and follow this road to the end so yes as I was saying black sorry Mount Blackwood Lerda Gorge so that is there's a big the telecom tower up there. We're going to come back down here, as I was saying, out onto this road and off to the end. It is some beautiful countryside out here. Oh, get a load of that view. Loving it. All right, 
right. I'm not sure if you guys can see that, but that's a steep descent. We are well and truly dropping in altitude here. On the hike, it um, or on the all trail sort of thing, it says that uh, this first bit, well actually it was fairly flat, so it must be this drop here, and then we have another bit later on where it drops down quite a lot. But uh, the way I'm going here, I reckon I've dropped, I must have dropped 50, at least 50 meters, maybe even 100 meters. But, uh, whoa, she's hard going on the old knees. I think I'm gonna get myself some, uh, oh, look at that view, get a load of that. You could almost just sit up here and camp, couldn't you? Um, I was gonna say, I'm uh, gonna have to invest in some uh, trekking poles, I reckon, because the, uh, I did the Oxfam probably about five years ago, and I found that the trekking poles made a big difference. I know people, some people say, oh, that's for old people. But I'll tell you what, I'm not exactly a spring chicken, and uh, I'd like to be able to do this for a bit longer and uh, protect my knees a little bit. But even just coming down this bit here, I can feel the, the weight on my knees, especially with an 18 kilo pack. So, oh yeah, this is great. So I literally just took a tumble. Well, I didn't take a tumble, I put my foot on a rock and I slipped like this, put back, put my elbow back on the ground because I was holding some, I had the tripod in my hand and uh, I whacked my elbow on a rock. Not bad, like it's fine, totally fine now. It's, well, sorry, it's totally fine. But uh, I'll tell you what, it was close enough that made me go, oh damn, if I had uh, put more weight on that elbow and it had been probably a couple of inches to the side, all that weight would have been on the tip of my elbow when it cracked onto the rock. Ah, check, one broken elbow. That wouldn't have been very good, about a kilometer into the hike. Remember those tracking poles I mentioned before? <laughs> yeah, probably not a bad investment. First uh, fence crossing. Thankfully, we've got ourselves a nice little step ladder here, up and over. Oh, oh yeah, still can't get over that view. Oh, that looks a bit steep on the way down. Oh. And that is the hill we came down. Now it says over here, go right. Now does it mean along the fence line? But am I spying something over there? Is that a blue dot? Let's go investigate. Yeah, no, it was a hard right. Over the fence, hard right. I went down there to look at that, uh, what I thought was a blue thing. It was just a, uh, a little marker on the electric fence. So, hard right, walking between two properties. I'm guessing that is Leonard Gorge, and up this end, on top of the hill, must be some private property. Looks like this is the way we're going. All right, up to our next marker. Whew, back to a bit of civilization. We basically just went through that little open section there and uh, between a couple of properties. So, a little gate, a couple of horse studs. You see all these cockatoos out here? I don't know what type of cockatoos they are. Some of you might know. I mean, they just look like white cockatoos. Oh, there they go. But I've seen heaps of them. There they are, up on the top of the trees over there. Seen heaps flying around. I'm assuming it's just a white cockatoo. So we just came through the uh, the gate just there, and according to this sign, we were, that was the lower Chadwick track, Ludog River, three kilometres, three and a half hour return, steep sections. Well, if you're going uphill, yeah, but I don't know. All right, shout out to Green Hills property owners. And from what I can gather, we go down here and off to the left. Whew. A couple of people park their cars. Maybe people come here and start a trail from here. I'm assuming we're going to go down Blackwood Ranger's track. Let's go. Just to the right of this sign I've just seen over here, there's a tree with a door on it and it says, Horse Carrots, welcome to feed. Let's see if there's any horse carrots in there. 
Are there any carrots in there? Oh, very potential. Watch me open this, have a spider on me. Oh, it's a big bag. Ah, for feeding the horses. Horse out over there. Ah, check out this old buggy. No, it's not a buggy. What is that? That looks like an old plow. A plow from the very old days. Yep, a plow. Look at that. Geez, I wonder how old that thing is. <sighs> 60s? 50s? I don't know. That is some old gear. Oh, I'll tell you what, there's a nice beautiful breeze blowing as we uh, walk down here. I'm glad it's not nice or too hot. I was walking across the top and it was actually that breezy that I was like, oh, I wonder if I'm going to be a touch cool. But uh, yeah, no, sun's definitely warm. conscious of how many people I'd run into on this track to see whether or not it would be like a busy track. Am I going to bump into heaps of people? Probably my biggest concern was am I going to set up camp tonight and have noise or have people you know camping in the valley with me um, you know people carrying on which is still a concern because well we haven't got to camp yet but it's interesting I um I just passed a a, uh, what do they call it? a mountain bike rider and I probably passed I don't want to call them day hikers like they just look like people that are out for a walk they didn't have any gear with them um, in that first section I passed us maybe two or three people that were just they almost look like locals just out for a walk and then I've just passed another two um, young bloke who looked like he was out for a walk no gear and then a, an older bloke probably sort of my age with a walking stick as in like a, a stick um, and he looked like he was just out for a bit of a, a bit of a walk But I'll be very interested to see if I come across any other hikers that have got like backpacks and are actually Hiking hiking as in well, maybe it's just overnight hiking. Maybe that's what I'm thinking that you need to have a, uh, a Backpack or something like that To be doing an overnight hike <coughs> Excuse me <coughs> But uh, yeah clicking along. I think we're uh, about two kilometers in uh, Not gonna lie. I probably need to pick up the pace a little bit Hope you guys are enjoying the uh, the trip so far. If you've got any comments, obviously you know put them down below. Subscribe, blah blah blah, all that type of stuff. Put the bell on because what I'd really like to do is uh, try and bring out a good video like this, you know a good video like this. Bring out a video. Hopefully it's good. Uh, at least every month. That's my plan. Uh, I'm going to try and get the kids out uh, to come along with me as well. So we might get Alexis or Elijah. Uh, probably just one at a time because it's a bit hard to sort of look grab two out here in the bush just make sure they're all safe but uh, that's my plan so yes shout out to uh, Syntax 77 I'm actually hoping kind of hoping that I've got internet access wherever I camp tonight because he just released another video uh, yesterday morning and uh, I kind of wouldn't mind sitting down to watch that and also I suppose the people that have inspired me to get out here and do this. The first one was Scotty's Gone Walkabout. I'll put a link to his uh, channel. Give him a, uh, a shout out. Tell him Blade sent you over or Ben, whatever. Um, he does really good videos. He's probably that was him and there's Eric off track. They're the two sort of top guys here in Australia that I've come across that uh, do videos. And then there's a bloke Syntax 77 over in the States who does. I mean, there's a lot of people in the States that do videos, but uh, he does ones I really enjoy. Lots of narrative, narrative, sorry. And he talks about the actual tracks he's going on. So I like his style of video and that's kind of what I'm mimicking. So I'm hoping mimicking is the best form of flattery. So yeah. All right, we've got a sign coming up. What do we got here? Ah, no gully reference area. Unauthorized access prohibited. What's this one? 
Fox Gully track. And I think they call them blazers, but we've been following these blue ones. I'll check the GPS and we'll get ourselves uh, on the right track. And now that's still got it. That is actually really high. I would say from where we are here, that is three stories high incline. And if you look behind us, that has dropped away an awful lot. It's a big hill, all uphill. Yeah, baby. I'm uh, I've just ticked over the hour mark, and it looks like I'm averaging about 3 k's an hour so <laughs> it's funny I was just coming around the corner there and I was looking at the times and I'm like oh averaging 3 k's an hour I might need to uh, increase the speed here a little bit and I came around the corner and saw this hill and I was like oh man I'm not increasing anything oh because as I said it's 13 k's in I'm not sure if I'm going to camp 13 k's in but obviously if it's 26 round trip what I'm hoping is to knock off at least half, if not a bit more today, because tomorrow's supposed to be 31. Right now it's only 21, so it's gonna be 10 degrees hotter tomorrow. So my plan is to put a dint in it today, or find a really good campsite at a reasonable hour today, get up early. Oh yeah, look at that hill. Holy mackerel. Get up early tomorrow and uh, put in some decent kilometers before it gets too hot. But uh, thankfully it doesn't get the hottest part of the day isn't until about four o'clock in the afternoon. I hope to be home by that time. Oh, let's keep going. <sighs> You're not gonna believe this. Literally, that was the peak of the hill. Come over the peak of the hill thinking, oh yeah, it's gonna be flat. No. Big, big drop down. We are notching up some altitude changes. All right, well, we've just come over the Arno Gully reference area around that sign. Now heading behind us down Bears Head Range Track. And if I spin around, whoosh, whew, though they know bears don't like going downhill, that is a big drop off. Well, there's a glimpse of a little bit of a view there, but uh, unfortunately it looks like we're gonna have to drop straight down again. I'm noticing this track is very much up and down, up and down. I'd hate to know how much elevation gain and decrease I've done. It's great though, I'm working up such a good sweat. I think I just ticked over, oh, I see, where are we up to? Let me just quickly check the old watch. 4.17 kilometers, hour and a half. Yeah, we've picked up the pace a little bit, but these hills are uh, slowing me down a little. I'm hoping, I noticed when I look back at the, uh, the map, holy mackerel, this is a lot steeper than I thought it was gonna be. Ooh, get a load of this. Oh my goodness, what is with these hills? Oh, hopefully this is the last one, because I know once we uh, get over all the big decreases, there is actually uh, quite a lot of flat. So I'm hoping this afternoon I'll make up some, uh, some time, but I'll tell you what, it's just been such a beautiful day. Can't any better this sky. Look at that. Oh, the weather is phenomenal. Okay, so we've just come over the hill and we've got Clifford Track. That reminds me of that big red dog. Clifford Track off to our right. However, blue blazers, little arrows pointing off down there. I've checked the GPS. We're going that way. 
That's Clifford Track. Oh yeah. Keep on trucking. Up over another hill. And we have just come to Long Point Track. Now, the blue arrows, or the blue bridle blazes, or whatever they're called, are saying straight ahead. But I just checked the GPS, and it said left. I'm assuming that little pathway through there is where we're going. Ooh, I might just double check that. All right, just check the GPS, and yes, blue blazes down that way with the arrows, but we are going down a long point track, so off the foil drive tracks and onto some real trails. Anyone want to take a guess at what that used to be? There's no actual body. Um, obviously it was a bird of some type with black feathers, gray feathers, maybe. Fox maybe got it. I don't know, still blowflies buzzing around. Can't be too old. Well, we're off the track, or sorry, we're off the four-wheel drive tracks, and uh, I just checked the GPS. We go, oh, sorry, kicked. Uh, we uh, go through here for a little bit, and then we've got a big drop down. That big drop down that I was talking about before, um, all those little bits I've gone through so far have been nothing compared to this i think we're up about 500 meters and i think we are going to drop down several hundred meters in one go so um yeah it'll be interesting but i think once we get down we actually get to the river so we drop down to the river and i've kind of been hoping that well we are definitely in here now Whew. um i've been hoping to have lunch and it's coming up on three o'clock and I've been nibbling on these things here. Joanne got these. Where are they? Here we go. Oh, fruit and veg. These, oh, yeah, strawberry. They were very nice. So I've knocked off a packet of those to keep me going. Yeah, I uh, was wondering, do I have my lunch at the top of the hill before I go down? Because I was like, oh, I want to have lunch at the river. One, because it'll probably be cooler, a bit more shade. And, um, oh, and I'll be able to fill up my water. I'll be interested to check actually to see how much water I've gone through. As I said at the start, I have three litres in the camelback, but I've been very conscious of sipping the water as I go along. And so I've definitely would have gone through at least a litre. Um, I've just been trying to go walk every couple of hundred metres, take a mouthful, because when I did my practice hike, with the 14 kilos on, I uh, had a bit of a headache at the end of the day. So I've brought Panadol, I've brought Hydrolite, and what I'll probably do is when I stop for lunch, I, uh, my original plan was to have some noodles, because uh, that's what Syntax 77 does. And I was like, oh, that's probably a quick, easy meal. Have some noodles, and then have some Hydrolite, but just depending on how we go, or how we're going for time. I'm very conscious of, and I know I've mentioned it, of how we're going for time, but I think that once we get down this big hill here, and at the moment it's just a nice gradient, but when I looked on the map, it was like all the gradient lines are really, really close together. I thought, ooh, this is going to be like a drop-off. But yeah, hopefully down the hill, lunch, and then it'll be flattened right out, and then we put down some kilometres and uh, get ourselves down to a campsite at a reasonable time. Ideally, I'd like to be at a campsite by, well, I don't know, like five? I was gonna say four, 4.35, yeah. But I think that that's just unrealistic. Um, definitely wanna be there by six. Because as the, even though the sun doesn't set till eight, I don't really wanna be setting up in the sun, sorry, in the shade, uh, shade, blah, while the sun's setting. I wanna have myself all set up nice and comfortable with plenty of time to spare so even if i it rolls around till sort of 5 30 i will probably seriously start looking for oh, over the logs somewhere to uh camp for the night even if it's not as far around the loop as i'd wanted to but i can always re take stock tonight sit down have a look at the map see how far i got and um here yeah, figure out how early i need to get up 
or how far distance wise I've got to oh geez terrible bit of uh, footage there and uh, figure out how far I've got to go just past my uh, what I would consider my first official day hiker um, bloke coming the other way on the way up that big hill not that we're at the bottom yet we just went down a bit of a steep bit and uh, yeah he had a backpack and at least two bottles of water on his chest and I'm assuming it was a, a bladder in the back but uh, yeah he was sweating on the way up that hill You can just see out through the tree line here. I've just noticed over this way, over here, we're just starting to drop down below that ridge line. This is we're coming down off the ridge line. So both that ridge line and that ridge line over there, those two are both now higher than we are. And uh, yeah, we're gonna drop. Can you guys see it? All the way, you can't really see down through there. Oh, wait a sec, back over this way. Maybe down through there. You see it down through there? Down through that little area there that's further away. It drops down. Just came across this little fella. Sitting here on the tree. Now is that a spitfire? When I was a kid I used to think those caterpillars that had a uh, little red bits up around their face were spitfires. They could spit stuff on you. Oh, he's just hiding there on the tree. Hopefully a bird doesn't get you, little man. Ah, good luck to you. Hello, little fella. Blue tongue lizard. I assume it's a blue tongue lizard. Right there. Yes. Just sitting there in the sun. Smack bang in the middle of the path. All right. Don't mean to uh, interrupt you, sir, but I just need to get around you there, mate. Oh, oh. I wonder what his eyesight's like. Oh, there we go. Hey, little fella. You want to jump off the path for me, mate? That'd be great if you could. Thanks, buddy. No rush. You're right. Take your time. Oh, dodgy footage. Should never be able to see the shadow of the camera. What are you doing, Ben? You alright, mate? Just gonna, can you take a couple more steps off there for me? A few more. I'm gonna go past. There you are, buddy. Ah, good job. Oh, we're seeing all the wildlife down here now. See you later, mate. Oh, just taking a breather. That was a massive descent. It uh, was substantially bigger than I thought it was going to be. And I would like to think I'm about halfway down. Maybe even a bit more. But, um, oh, my legs are tired. <laughs> <It's>, um, <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah, we'll go this way. That won't be too bad. And uh, yes, it um, has definitely been hard, uh, hard yakka coming down. That bloke that was going up, this would be a killer going up. So I'm actually really conscious of what it's going to be like tomorrow. Hopefully the bit that I've got isn't a, um, like a, a big steep, steep bit like this. It's more of a gradual incline. But uh, whoo, holy mackerel. Good thing is I can hear water running. So I'm getting close to the river. Andrew also tells me there's a lot of water running in the river. Um, I'll be topping up my water and depending on uh, how we go, I may even top up the other three letters as well and take six in case I go up further up the gully or whatever and I can't find anywhere that's got water. I don't want to get myself caught up there without enough water. I'd rather have too much than not enough. I thought somebody was coming. Ooh, Ooh. three quarters of the way down. I'd like to think so at least anyway. Oh yeah. I 
I was just thinking before when I passed that bloke earlier, the one I thought was a day hiker, I, um, I like the idea of passing people occasionally because I feel like it means there's less chance, oh, here we go, over a rock, um, that I'm going to run into any snakes and stuff. But then having said that, was that lizard before or after that bloke? I feel like the lizard was after that bloke. Oh, another big steep deep set. Um, yeah, oh, look at this. That's a drop off. So that's level. Down, 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 yeah. That's a steep drop off. And I'm going off that side of it. Whew. All right, first disaster of the day. The nozzle of my drink thing's come off, which means I've got to go back up that until I find it. Oh, crap. I'm hoping it was literally in the last 50 meters. Oh, there it is. I was literally walking back going, please God, let me find this. Oh, there it is. I dumped my, um, my bag off. I figured there's no point carrying my backpack and everything. Oh, I actually remember doing it because I bit it, took a drink, and then I sort of just, yeah, I didn't check it. So learning opportunity, always make sure your, uh, your drink thing stays on. And now, the water thing was still working, but obviously it doesn't have a closure on it. You have to suck a lot harder to get the water out. But, uh, oh, holy mackerel. Whew, thank you. Oh, there we go. Beautiful. See the river right there. Plenty, of, actually you can see it goes all the way up here, all the way around there, it goes down there. So, you guys can't, I don't know if you can see it just there. Can you see that down there? Bit of river just here. That's a big drop off. So we're almost there. Lunchtime very shortly. Ooh. <laughs> I'm like, hmm, can I go for a swim? We'll see. Oh, oh. Just crested another little hill. Finally got a view of the valley. Uh, that's the uh, the weir down over there. Pier, weir, weir. Over on the right there. River runs around this way. Under there. I think we're actually going to follow the river when we get down. But what I don't like the look of <laughs> is this. It's just rocky outcrop and then everything just drops away over that edge. Ooh, here we go. All right, almost down. You know it's steep when there's a cable to help you down. There's that weir I pointed out before. We're almost down to the river. But we've still got some steep bits to go. But it's around that away. Oh my goodness. Oh, that's just what I came down. Whew. Diversion Weir. Blackwood Ranges track via Long Point track. Steep. 2.2 kilometers or 1.5 hours. What it should say is Black Ranger's track via vertical climb, 2.2 kilometers, catch the elevator. Because that, oh, that was crazy. Oh, only a little bit more, I'm at the river. Oh, there's the weed, by the way. Ah, made it across the river. Oh, I'll tell you what, I was a little bit nervous. But you get over here, and literally it is, I think it's across these rocks, and then I think we're going along this rock wall here, along the very edge there, and somehow we're gonna get on the other side of the weir, up over there. So, yeah, 
Let's see how this works out. So they've got this sign just here that basically says if the floodgates open, the water level can change. So I'm standing there looking at that sign. Those floodgates open, or the weir gates open, it's going to get real wet real quick here. So if you are coming to do this trail and you're not sure whether or not those, the water is up near that sign, you're probably not coming across. I wonder if they ever actually let it out that much. Gee whiz, the water is clear. Um, I'm not going to fill up with water quite yet because the trail actually goes along the, uh, the river for a while and I figure I'll top up when I'm starting to move away from the river but we're starting, <laughs> I know I keep saying it, the time is getting away from me. Um, something else I sort of, um, let's see if I can walk and talk, something else I thought of was, oh there we go, that'll be a rock, um, it, the sun will probably set in here a lot quicker because I didn't even think about we're in a valley or a gully, whatever you want to call it. And uh, yeah, obviously the sun sets a lot lower, a lot quicker, because once it gets down along the, uh, behind the valley wall. Oh, all right, I need to put the pedal in the middle. I reckon this walk is all about lizards today. There he goes. We saw a blue tongue lizard. Oh, there's another one there. Ah, oh, he's gonna get that fly, or that ant. Where are you going, little fella? As long as you haven't got your, uh, Where'd the other one go? There he is. As long as you haven't got your cousin's snakes out, I'll be happy camper. Haha! -ha, there is a ladder behind this last wall of the weir. That's probably where we're going. I was starting to get worried we're going to have to go right up the rock face. Whew, I'm very pleased. Oh, climbing up the ladder, this must be like an overflow valve of some type in here. Yeah. Water goes through there and then through those little, I don't know, little weirs, little step downs. Interesting. have that weight off. Oh, I thought it was going to fall over. Yeah, I'm going to fall over. Holy dooly. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. What time is it? Two minutes to five and we've gone four hours, 8.4 kilometers. Um, yeah. So not exactly <laughs> the kind of pace. What was that? What did I say? Eight kilometers. So about we're averaging about two kilometers an hour. Um, that stretch there, obviously that bit coming down from the ridge, absolutely destroyed us. It's hard to. Well, it must be. Well, I'll tell you. What's the? Uh, what's it saying? Our, our elevation at the moment is 250 meters, and we came down from 560. So like 250 meters or something like that. I feel like there's mozzies here. I'm gonna put some more, uh, uh, what's it called? Aero guard on. Now my problem is, or my conundrum, what I'm conscious of, is it's almost, what time we say it was? Four, five, five o'clock, sun sets in three hours. I mentioned earlier I wanted to try and be at a campsite by five, 5.30. We're only eight kilometers in. It's like 18 kilometers tomorrow and it's gonna be 31 degrees. That's not ideal, is that right? 26, eight, yeah, 18 kilometers tomorrow. Really, I need to knock out another five kilometers this afternoon. And I need to knock it out in about an hour. Uh, I am running on empty though. Oh, I've got a cherry ripe. Oh, I forgot I had that cherry ripe. Oh, yes. Oh, geez, that cherry ripe never looks so good. Um, oh, good mate, how are you? Yeah, not too bad, Yeah, good.
All right, just had a chat to an ice bike. He's gonna be camping down along here somewhere as well. So I just checked my water. I'm down to one litre, so I knocked over two litres. Um, just took a couple of Panadol. I'm gonna drop a couple of hydrolytes in here. And uh, I'm not sure how close this path sticks to the river. So I'm actually tempted to top up my, I'm gonna drop these hydrolytes in here. Boom, boom. Let those guys go. Get my little rubbish bag here. Uh, what time is it? Uh, about quarter past five. Had that cherry ripe. It's not enough, but I'm wondering whether or not it's gonna be enough to keep me going for now. And maybe I'll just have a big dinner. Because I am, as I've <laughs> stated about 50 times, I am conscious of um, running out of time. Like I said, 18 k's tomorrow is just not uh, plausible. What I'm going to do is I'm going to fill up the water, drink this, get some hydrolytes back into me. I'll get some uh, salts and stuff back into me. Top up my water. I'm going to get that full, what's this bug? Um, topped up to a full uh, three litres again. I don't think I'll top up the other thing as well. I think I'll just leave that. And uh, three litres should be enough to get me where I'm going and tonight, as long as um, it's not too hot. It's, it's dropping off now. I don't know what the temperature is. I haven't got it on here. But uh, let's fill up the water. All right. Ugh, got my uh, filter here. Probably just need to bring that bit down. Pocket. Oh. So the water is actually really clear, but I can see some little bugs. And if you're anything like me, my grandparents, who have both passed away now, used to always give me handkerchiefs for Christmas. So what I'm hoping, oh, it's actually a really small hole, isn't it? Is that I can fill this up, pour it through there, and try and filter out any bits. See how long this takes. into the hole a little bit. Have a look. Have a look at all the little bugs and stuff. Let me get a hold of the thing so I don't drop it. Here we go. Look at all the bugs and bits that are in the water. That's all right. Beautiful. All right. So I've got my Filter here full of river water, and it can just sit there for a minute. That, I've got to make sure I remember to wash that out later on. And my handkerchief, my filter, pretty good. Oh, I'll hang that out later on tonight to let it dry. Oh, now I'm going to have that hydrolite, oh, big blowfly. And then, oh no, it's on the other side. I remember where I put all my stuff. Now, my hydrolyte here is just finished. I knocked this back. What is that? A bit of thread. Oh. Yeah, that went down three. <clears throat> okay. All right. Show on the road again. <clears throat> so I am going to fill up my the bladder. Let me quickly rinse these out the river. Oh. Got my bladder, which now has about half a litre in it. So Whew. how am I going to do this? Ah, it's all right. We'll get it in there. Ooh, straight away. Oh yeah. Oh, three litres of water. I'm pretty sure this thing actually uh, it filters pretty quick. So he's hoping the water, the river water, is uh, clean enough, and this thing's going to get it clean. Oh, five, 
six five thirty six thirty I reckon we'll go for an hour if I go for an hour now see how much distance we cover and then I'll probably seriously start looking for uh, somewhere to camp um, depending on how we go we may have to change our plan for tomorrow I'm not uh, stubborn or so stubborn that I wouldn't change my plans it's uh I'm happy to admit if I've bitten off a little bit more than I can chew, that's fine. I'm just very conscious tomorrow is going to be 31 degrees. We'll see how we go. If it's uh, cool early on, and the other bloke I just took that stopped past here just before, he was saying that uh, when he stayed here last time, the cockatoos woke him up at about 5 o'clock, even before the sun was up. So it may be an early rise tomorrow. <laughs> but uh, we'll see how we go. Well, that's almost full. Still a little bit in there. We might top this uh, ladder up as much as we can. Oh, actually, no, I probably don't want to overfill it because the seal at the top here might not be. Obviously, it's going to be waterproof, but I just don't want to. Let's not uh, push it past what it's designed to do. Three litres is quite a lot, and we've still got that if we need to. All right, well, time to get ourselves on the road. What time is it? It is, let's have a quick look, 5.30. So, eight and a half Ks, 13, four and a half Ks. <laughs> let's get into it. Oh, so, I'm not gonna lie, it is beautiful. I've got a uh, lovely river here. The other bloke I just bumped into again because I thought that path was going up the back road there. Now check the track again, and it's actually literally going up the side of the river. So I spin you guys around. That's what I'm going up. We're at uh, what are we? Whew, come on, nine kilometres, quarter to six. Sun slop. I'm going to keep pushing. See how far I can get. <sighs> yeah. Looks like I might be going for a swim. Um. Oh, I should go back down there further. We're going to go back down there and cross over. Can't get over up here. Can't get around. It's a big rock face. Oh. All right. Just gonna have to be home because I'm exhausted. Ooh. Let's get some camp set up. Alright, so this is one of the benefits of having both the biggie and also the hammock. I um, deliberately brought them both on the off chance I was going to use the biggie in case I couldn't find two trees. But in the last hour, I have not found any, um, any flat ground. I've been walking on rocks the whole time and it is, what do we got? 6.44, so it's quarter to seven at night. We've done, I might pause this actually. Let's just go pause, uh, pause, what do we do? 10.4 kilometers, whew. Workout finished, yes please. Let's get this all set up. Nike, Nike, Nike. <laughs> Nike getting me sorted. All right, I was thinking about putting up the, um, the tarp, but I don't know real branches above me and it's not supposed to rain however I might just get the tent the um, hammock set up first and I'll reconsider this
sleeping bag about turn into a huge sleeping bag. So I was just coming over here to do a little pit stop and just past this tree here there is a big hole in the ground. I was like, oh look at all this ground here, it's all been dug up. And I was like, oh, I wonder why that is. And then, have a look over here, I was like, oh, I was like, oh, there's a wombat hole there. I was like, oh, look at all this stuff here. And then I came over here, and I was like, oh, there's sticks and stuff in his hole. Oh, he's gone back in. When I came back here before, his nose was just sticking out of the hole. He was literally just there. I must have scared him off. Oh, that or he's gone for a walk. Yeah, we might see a wombat. All right, guys, it's now actually almost eight o'clock, but I tell you what, <laughs> that might be my washing. <laughs> I, uh, I went for a swim literally right there. I went down and I thought, oh, I'm so hot and sweaty from today. I thought, oh yeah, I'll just jump. I'll just give myself a rinse off. Ooh, it is all kinds of fresh in that river. So I've just uh, gave myself a quick wash, changed all my clothes. Obviously, as you can see, they're drying out now. I'm going to have some dinner. And I reckon, holy mackerel, it's going to be a very early night for me tonight. But tonight, we're eating spaghetti bolognese. This is a uh, one of the back country. I was going to say this is something, you know, I put together early and I got a glass of wine but no I've just got like a backcountry and I'm a little bit nervous because when I saw the picture of it it basically looked like two minute noodles with really really brown like dark brown meat on top of it not like mince meat but like I don't know brown heading towards black kind of soup stuff on top of it so I'll be very interested to see how this turns out tonight dinner time got my uh, jet fuel here Got my backcountry cuisine, um, that's going to be dinner. I'm actually going to boil some water, but I'm also, I need to get another hydrolyte into me, I think, because I was starting to cramp up as I was going down the river, and that's probably never a good thing. So I figure I better get another one of those into me tonight. Uh, that'll make a big difference tomorrow morning. And I've already had a little, little, little bit of a look at the map, and I think there is going to be a definite change in the route um, for tomorrow. I'll um, we'll go through that with you guys a little bit later on. But yeah, based on how I went today, the distance, like I didn't make it maybe like a third of the distance. Um, well, maybe a third of the distance. But uh, yeah, no, it wasn't, it wasn't ideal. Right, so this thing needs, what does it say? Uh, pull open base, corner, shake bag, blah blah, tear open bag, remove satchel, remove any satchels, add water, okay, how long? How much water? Squeeze air out, let stamp tank to do this, add 500 mils, two cups. The big question is, does this thing have measurements on the inside? No, it does not. <laughs> so, that's alright, we will figure it out. Alright, we're actually starting to lose a little bit of light here, so. We've got to get the show on the road. And we'll get here. It looks like there's lots of grass, but it's actually like about a metre square here of nothing, so I'm quite happy with this. Here we go. There we go. Flying that way ever so slightly. Yeah, in that direction. Yeah. Water on that. Oh. Spaghetti bolognese. Freeze dried beef mince with tomato and a savory sauce served with noodles. Yeah, so it is going to be like two minute noodles, I think. We'll see how it is. Can we have a see my friends here? Alright guys, well, I, uh, I took it out after about 15 minutes, 
or 20 minutes, sorry, and it was a bit not quite ready. So I'll put it back in. It was a bit interesting though. I stirred it all up like they said to, and uh, <clears throat> the when I opened it, I was like, is that a meatball or is that like a lump of beef seasoning? I'm not sure. I ate it. I'm like, it was either some dodgy beef or it was, oh geez, it smells good. And my wombat friend over here, he might come for a visit. Um, it was uh, either, yeah, I don't know, I ate it. It was either really dodgy beef or it was um, a beef seasoning thing. All right, uh, it is almost dark. I can still see a little bit of sky. What's the time? I ended up, as I said, I put it in for 20. What was it? Seven minutes to nine. It's a late dinner. Let's give it a little test. So the noodles are actually a lot better than I thought they were going to look. When you're as hungry as I am, it tastes pretty good. I think I need to put more water in it. I'm pretty sure I put a solid 500 mils. I think you would actually have to go... Mm. There's still a little bit of water in the bottom. 500, maybe 700, 600, 600 mils. And it definitely benefits from the extra 20 minutes. So that was pretty good. Um, I did push myself harder than I probably should have. Um, I wasn't worried but I probably went two k's further along the river than I needed to. Um, there was a couple of spots at one stage where I was a bit like, my muscles and my legs were starting to cramp up and I was like, oh, I could be in a bit of trouble here. This is, um, well, not trouble, but I was like, I really need to find somewhere to camp. <sighs> Go away, camp and you know, set up. And then when I saw these two trees here, I was like, oh, please let these trees be good enough for camping. Found a couple of other spots, but they had um, thistles and stuff underneath, and I was like, oh, too much hassle to get in there and get it all done. Mm. Mm. I'm not going to lie, I'm pretty cactus. I, um, while this was cooking, I had another couple of uh, hydrolytes. I think tomorrow I am going to follow the river around. The original track was follow the river around and then it cuts off to the right and goes all the way up this uh, gully. And then that was supposed to be the campsite. Like, I'm at 10 k's in, so it's another three kilometers of hard yakka along the river. And um, that would be three k's down and up the, uh, yeah, up the gully and hook across and then back down the gully again, cross the river and then wind your way through. I had a look on the GPS and I can see when I go down, there is actually, even before I get to the bit where they cross the river and go to the right, which is east, uh, there's a track that cuts back up and joins up to where I sort of came across the, basically I went, which way was it? I've basically come in, gone down, cut across, down this way, I hope that's still on the camera, down, cut across this way, wound around, I was supposed to go around up here and then back up here and camp up here. I've camped about here. I can go up to this bit, cut across to this bit where I came down and then go back up to the car. Pretty sure that's what I'm gonna be doing tomorrow. So, yeah. Am I pleased with my first outing? Um, maybe. I'm pretty exhausted and that was that's probably the biggest um, not a concern I suppose I'd say it wasn't it was in, oh, enjoyable such about I leaned forward and my neck actually hurts so I'd probably have my backpack on properly but you know what it's the first time I'll learn I definitely want to do it again and I think I'll pick a trail that is very well defined. Like I spent I don't know how long this afternoon going along the river, doubling back, doubling back. Oh, I was so tired that I didn't video any of the stuff coming down the big hill. 
I didn't video a lot of the stuff along the river because I was literally exhausted and I couldn't. I was like, oh man, I haven't got the energy to do it. I just gotta keep going, keep going. Gotta get some more kilometers done. I've gotta find a campsite. Mm. So nice. And this is the big one. Two serves. Net 175 grams makes 600, 600 grams, almost 700 grams of pasta. Man, I'm gonna eat this and sleep well tonight. It's gone all quiet. Just before the sun set, the, all the cockatoos were going ballistic. And um, yeah, I was like, holy mackerel, please don't be going like that all night. But accordingly, as I said earlier, that other bloke said that the uh, cockatoos go pretty crazy first thing in the morning. So let's see how that goes. Hopefully not too early. Um, I'd like a bit of a sleep in. My goal, goal at the moment is, what do I go, eight? If I could be moving eight, I'm not gonna get that sleep in, am I? Mm. Sorry guys. I'm trying to be polite, but I'm hungry as. Um, yeah, eight-ish. I'm not getting out of bed. I'm gonna sleep in, like, my body's exhausted. Anyway, I hope you guys have enjoyed the day so far. I'm gonna eat this, crawl into this sleeping bag and get a good night's sleep. So, I'll see you guys in the morning. Night. It's actually just before seven o'clock. Had a uh, pretty good night's sleep. I um, took a little while to get to sleep last night. It was interesting, my left knee really started to ache. I'm pleased I brought some Panadol along. I ended up having to get out of bed maybe about 10. No, I went to bed about 10, 10.30 I got out and uh, took some Panadol, did some stretching because I was like, wow, no. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah, that was it. 10. 10.30, did some stretching because I was like, this knee, my left knee is really sore. It's uh, totally fine now this morning, but it was aching a lot. And I was like, oh, no. Man, it's interesting how we were talking about how I was mentioning right at the start of the hike. I need to get myself some hiking poles just to take the weight off my knees. And obviously, I think it was that big hike down from the, um, and down off the ridge line yesterday. So, yeah. Anyway, I'm uh, just laying here. Um, it is actually literally just blowing in some uh, some pretty ominous clouds. So it was blue skies, the majority blue sky, just before. But now all this cloud here is blowing in. It's nice and cool. So yes, don't know what I'm going to do yet. I uh, might just lay here and enjoy the morning a little bit. Though I am just watching that cloud going, is it about to rain? I hope not. Because if it starts to rain, I'll be like, no, I've got to get out of bed. Oh, oh yeah. Mm. We'll get up shortly. Morning guys, we actually did just get a touch of rain uh, 
it was interesting. I felt the rain. I was like, oh, it's starting to rain. I looked up and it was all totally blue sky. And what had happened was the sort of rain clouds had blown through and obviously had dropped some stuff over there and blown it through into the valley. But uh, oh, it's all quiet now. We've got a little bit of scattered cloud blowing through. Had a look at the map this morning. Uh, definitely going to be doing that shorter route. But I'm conscious that the first four kilometers of the route, four kilometers, I know it's a lot, it's a chunk, uh, is straight up the side of the river. So that could be hard slog. The incline back up doesn't look overly steep, so I'm hoping it's like a, a nice gradual uh, incline because I'm conscious. It's only, uh, it got down to about eight and a half degrees last night. I just checked the thermometer before and it's about 16 now. So got the arrow guard on to get rid of the mozzies. I woke up this morning, you can actually see the mozzies on the outside of the, um, <clears throat> excuse me, on the outside of the bug net. So I'm really glad I brought that along. So this morning we're mm, having some wheat picks for breakfast. Just brought some powdered milk and wheat picks I figured I'd want something quick and easy. Mm. The river was nice to listen to last night. Um, the cockatoos, they weren't too bad, but they did wake me up just after 5.30. I mean, no, kookaburras went off about 5.30 and then the cockatoos as of about 6. So um, a bit of a mixed night's sleep. I uh, woke up a couple of times to go to the bathroom um, and then as I said earlier on I, my knees were a bit achy but they're all fine this morning which is good uh, my plan is to have this clean up <clears throat> pack up the camp and we're gonna head uphill uphill up river and find our way to this track that leads us back up onto the ridge so that's the plan at the moment All right, so camp's all packed up. It is just before 8.30, and it's supposed to be 31 degrees, and like, I was worried it was gonna be hot. Look at this, uh, in. yeah. It's breezy, it's cool, which I'm not gonna complain about. That's fantastic. Uh, all I hope now is that it doesn't rain. So, yeah, we're gonna head up the river now and uh, see how we go. Whew, hit the road. Actually, no, I'll show you. Got the camp all packed away. Did the old, uh, what is it? Leave no trace situation. Make sure I didn't leave anything. Here we go. That was home sweet home for the night. All of my gear was up off the ground. So that's one of the benefits of having a, a hammock. And if you want to get a hammock, Nike, use my discount code BEN10 and you'll get 10% off your order. So little plug there. All right, let's go. Have a look at this rock slide here. There's a lot of, I don't know, I'm gonna call it slate, or is it shade or shard? It's all slid down from up there. All the way down here into the river. And I'm assuming that massive boulder, all three of them actually, have all probably come loose in the one slide. Oh, maybe not. Been spinning for about five, since five minutes after we left the camp. But it's only spinning really lightly, so I'm not gonna bother putting on a, any gear. Uh, if it's just like this, then that'll be okay. Whew, it is 
It's a little bit hard going, <laughs> but not too bad. I'd rather be going along the rocks, along the river, than absolute bush bashing. So, hmm, yeah. I don't know what these things are, but I have seen hundreds of them while I've been walking along the rocks. They seem to be absolutely everywhere. And they're very small, like that's my finger, to give you a reference. Small little caterpillars of some type. Oh, there's another one just under there, see? They are everywhere. All right, slight conundrum. This area here, goes to that rocky outcrop there. So I thought, oh, I'll double back and cross the other side. Other side comes across here to that rocky outcrop. Both of which look quite difficult to pass. That is a big climb. That is a big climb. I'm thinking I might be able to scramble over that point. Oh yes, hello little fella. Uh, another one of those caterpillar things. What is that? Cricket of some type? Crazy spider with antlers? I don't know. So I just climbed up that big ledge and there are three mountain goats, or goats, one there. One, two, three. You must have seen me or heard me. That's where I'm going and that's where I was down there before. I have just climbed up that. And that's really steep. That's like hands and knees, I had to hold on to rocks and tree limbs, or tree roots, because it's all shade and it's all breaking away, so it's all rolling down the hill. Oh, I tell you what, beautiful view. Bit of a drop down here. The scary thing is I'm almost halfway up the, uh, the ridge line. I'm like, oh, if I go up, am I at the top? Should I just go straight to the, um, yeah, I keep going where I'm going. Yeah. Doesn't seem that far. <laughs> Made it down. Not gonna lie, probably the sketchiest part of the trip. I'm trying to show you guys, I was up there. I basically went, obviously on this side of the river. Where is it? I would have climbed like up through here, over the top, and then sort of skirted my way down through here. But what I ended up doing was sort of scraping down on my bottom, sorry. Uh, where is it? Over there, down. Oh, under the bushes and stuff like that. And all the slate was just dragged, like, you know, sliding down the hill. So I was a bit like, yeah, it's a bit dodge. I ran out of water up the top there, which is fine, because I was only gonna bring a liter from camp, because I've got the river right here. So I'll top up my water now with another liter or so. I'm gonna take a rest. How long have we been going? Been going uh, just over an hour. We've done 1.2 kilometers. So that just shows you how slow going it's been. But that's okay. I'm gonna fill up with some water, have a bit of a break for 10 minutes, and then we'll keep going. Alright, I've gone with a new tactic. I am sick to death of bush bashing, so I've just gone to full wet weather four wheel drive. I am just literally walking through the river because I'm like, you know what? I'm sick to death <laughs> of trying to pick my way through the bush. So I'm like, I'm just going to walk along the edge of the river 
And as long as it doesn't get deeper than my waist, happy days. If it gets deeper than my waist, that might be a bit more interesting. Just gotta be a bit careful. Some of the rocks are slippery. Um, I mean, rocks have been slippery the whole way along. Well, I should cross over that side. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. All right, go cross over. I was just having a look at the GPS and there's actually a bit of a, I'm gonna go up here a fair way to that track that I wanna go off, but there's, I was looking at the contour lines of the hills and it looks like there might be a bit of a valley or a gully, maybe almost a kilometer before that point. And I'm wondering whether or not I could cut up through there. Um, if the bush is really dense, then maybe not. But if it's not, it looks like it's a really gentle run all the way up, whereas the actual trail I'm going to, I was having a look at it, and it goes off from the river and then it goes zhoop, a bit like the last one did. So I'll suss out what this uh, valley looks like down here. Um, I don't know how far it is, maybe a kilometer or so. And uh, that may be an alternative. Oh, it's time for another drink. We're still, we're only two hours, 40 minutes. But I'm uh, fast approaching that valley and uh, I'm just looking at the rocks here either side of the river and I'm just wondering whether or not uh, when I get around the corner here I'm actually going to get faced with like sheer sides going into the river which means I've done plenty of river crossings like down here but it's only been up to my knees a little bit higher. I don't want to have to go swimming because uh, I've got all the gear in my pack. I will probably go up the hill if that is the only option. I'm not going for a swim because I can't hold my pack above the water and there's too much stuff in it to actually get wet. Too much gear, so uh, the decision may get made for me. We'll see. <sighs> Tell you what, it's a nice day. A little bit of cloud. Thankfully it's not too hot yet. I don't know what the temperature is actually. Have I got a temperature? All right, can I reach the temperature gauge? Well, I might be able to. That wrong side. Here we go. Temperature is 26.6 degrees, which is 80 degrees Fahrenheit apparently. 26.6. Um, I'm surprised it's that hot actually. Um, probably because I'm down here near the river, it's feeling much cooler. I think once I get up on the ridge, especially if I get out in the sun, I'm really going to feel that. This water's looking a bit deep here. <laughs> I don't know what I'm gonna do here in a minute. I've actually been really lucky. I was just thinking this before. I've been walking up here and at any point I could have come to a stage where it was just like totally sheer cliffs either side and it's like, you're going for a swim, Ben, um, or you're gonna to have to backtrack massively, which I'd hate to do because the only track that I'm aware of out of here is the one I came in on, which is way back, like yesterday morning kind of thing. And yeah, I don't wanna do that. All right, I think I'll go up here a bit further, see if I can get along the edge of the water. And hopefully, I'm literally only probably about a kilometer away from that track now, so either way, should hopefully have a change of scenery and I'll be able to get off these darn rocks. I swear I must have been a mountain goat in a, uh, in a previous life. The other side of it is uh, pretty hard. I got around to about sort of there and then I went back and climbed over those rocks there or waded across onto this side and then just four wheel drive it through this section but uh this looks like it's that area i was just talking about and so far as that's the valley that doesn't uh isn't too steep to go up but i've had a look at the gps the track's not too far around and even though the track looks like it's much steeper i kind of want to get back onto a track so the other thing is if i leave the track now if i go up this way this is my last water so i'd have to fill up um, a lot and I think I'm going to fill the three litres uh, in the uh, camelback and also three litres in the um, in the water filter because once I'm gone that's it. Am I going to drink six litres of water? I would be very surprised but I'd rather have two litres at the end than have one litre short so all right let's uh, keep trekking along this river
All right, guys, I'm stopping for a proper break. We've just ticked over uh, three hours. We've done four point, about 4.4 kilometers. I'm actually gonna have some noodles. I think I'm gonna have some hydrolyte as well because I figure get a good feed into me, get the hydrolytes, uh, all the salts and stuff into me. And then when I go around the corner here, we're not very far. It's actually literally maybe five, 600 meters around the corner here. And then we're gonna be going up that uh, track and it's gonna be pretty steep. So I wanna get all those into me and uh, be prepared. So snack time. So the wind's coming actually from this direction here. So what I'm gonna do is I wanna put my, uh, my stove in here so it doesn't blow out. And just gonna pop a little bit in here. I might actually put a couple more rocks over this side just to uh, kind of reduce the amount of breeze we get through this little area here. Might not make a whole lot of difference, but uh, hopefully it makes some difference. Let's get some water. All right, we've got our gourmet uh, noodles here. And the water is actually down to just a hair over uh, 500 mils. So I drank a lot that time. Got a for the noodles. That's probably gonna take a while to go, but that's okay. While that's uh, boiling, I'll probably go and top up my water all the way to the very top, I think. So I've taken a fairly big break here. I've uh, topped up my, cooked my noodles, filled up the water bottle. So I've got just under three liters in the uh, in the Camelback, and I've got I've just filled up the uh, water filter bag as well, and that's got probably oh, just a hair under three liters. And I'm just doing another hydrolyte down here, just getting that going. And uh, yeah, my battery, my spare battery, my big one, my, re my battery bank, sorry, has just gone flat. And so I've got about 55% on the GPS phone, I've got about 50% on this phone here. So, and my watch has just gone into power save mode. So I put it into power save mode because I was actually tracking the hike on it. But 15% uh, will last now forever. Well, not forever, but it'll last, uh, I don't know, three days now in power safe boat. So, yes. Whew. I am thirsty. I keep licking my lips. I'm really thirsty. I'm not looking forward to this hike. Even if I look over here, it's big hills. Hopefully it's just steady. I'm sure I feel a lot better after something to eat. Get some hydrolyte into me. And then, uh, yeah, we'll be good to go. I brought three packets of these uh, noodles thinking, oh yeah, I'll have two, one packet each day, and then I'll have a, a spare just in case I need it. And obviously yesterday I didn't have any noodles at all. Mm. Which was wrong, because let's be honest, I pushed myself way too hard on that first day. And it was because I overestimated how far I was gonna be able to hike. So, bug um, yeah breakfast and then lunch was really that cherry ripe in the hydrolyte and the next thing I ate was dinner at nine o'clock that night so to be quite nice probably a little bit silly uh, so today it's sit down for five minutes every hour and this meal now and this isn't even lunch I'll have another one of these at lunchtime I mean it is 12 o'clock now holy mackerel I've been here Almost, no, surely I haven't been here an hour. Maybe I have, eh. You know what, I needed a break. Oh, it's a nice spot, except I'm sick to death of these rocks. Like, oh man, I have had my fill of rocks. Unbelievable. No, well, I'm gonna get stuck into this, and uh, then we'll see what this uh, next section of the trail is gonna be like. Uh, hydrolyte going down a tree. Mm. My neck is very sore, like my traps. Oh. I just haven't got my backpack sitting right. That's no, right. I don't know why though, because I um, 
I did that long sort of test trail, I did 10 Ks with it. It was four kilometer, kilometers, four kilograms lighter, but you wouldn't think that that would make that much of a difference. Four kilograms would then move all the weight onto your neck. So I'm not sure if I haven't got the chest strap set right. I kind of felt like when I did the, uh, the trail, when I was just doing the test hiking, that I had the chest strap quite loose. Hydrolite gone. A little bit of noodles left. I'm done. All right, 20 past 12, 23 minutes past 12. Meh, about 20 past 12. Uh, packed up all the gear. I can feel that little bit of weight extra in the back there with the. Uh, couple of liters in the back of the uh, water filter. I'm starting to think, should I, if I put it in too early, because I've still got another, maybe anything up to a kilometer to go and I'm carrying the extra weight now already, I probably shouldn't have put it in. Um, uh, can you see my brain ticking over? Do I tip it out now and redo it later? No, it's all in, it's ready to go. Let's hit the road. All right, so I am fast coming up on this, uh, the path. I just had a look on the GPS and it actually looks like the path could be up there somewhere. I was kind of contemplating whether I could just cut across because the contour lines looked like there was only one deviation, which is 50 meters. I suppose that's 50 meters, isn't it? Um, but I don't think I'm going to, I think I'm going to cross over, keep going up and definitely going to go up the path. It's, uh, it is just a beautiful river but just very hard to get to that I'm just going to have to uh, find nicer, easier, accessible camp spots. <laughs> All right, so I'm coming up on it hard and fast at the moment. Um, I just checked the GPS and the GPS says it should be, I'm literally at the T point, but it also says that it comes down and meets the river. So I'm just going to walk along here a bit further. And, oh, jeez. <laughs> Rocks. I reckon that must be just under here. We'll keep going a little bit. I just don't want to walk any further than I need to oh, to uh, get up to it. I reckon it must be in here. It must just not come down this close to the, the actual river. The fact that I've been walking in the river probably has a bearing on that. All right, let's do some forward. Oh, geez, let's do some forward driving up through here. Prickles, and hopefully, here we go. Whoa. Hopefully, the path is just here somewhere. The trail. It better be a good trail. Is all I can say. I tell you what, if this trail is a really dodgy trail too, I will not be impressed. kid you not. There does not appear to be anything here. Oh guys, I'm in Struggle Street. Time to check the GPS again. I think we might be in luck. I uh, saw this through the bush. We've literally just four-wheel drive up that hill and yes, here we go. Oh, thankfully. So I don't know where this path, here's a campsite here. Here is the, uh, where's the, see it's saying it goes along there and then drops down, I don't know, holy mackerel. All right, have a look at this. All right, here we go, campsite, post, and you'd be like, oh, where's the trail go? Oh, I don't know, maybe it's over here somewhere, maybe it's over, oh, just go straight off the cliff. That's it down through there. No wonder I missed it, holy mackerel. Anyway, I might have a break here. What time is it? Uh, quarter past 11. Yeah, I'm gonna have a little break here just to give myself a bit of recovery after one of those rocks. We're on the home stretch. Well, we're on the stretch. We're back on a track, how's that? We're back on a track, that's good. So 
I think what I'll do now is all the water I drink or yeah that I'll use first will be the stuff out of the um, the bladder out of the water filter I've never drunk straight out of this always put it in the glass in the cup I suppose I've got one right here Ugh. oh I tell you what what I would give is something with sugar in it and the paste I mean yeah, I don't know. I, might, I think I must be dehydrated. Oh boy. Oh, so what have we got left in there? Two and a half litres. I reckon we're pretty good. Ah, here we go. Get some water going. Oh. Jeez, I'll tell you what. That was a hard slog through the uh, through the rocks. Actually, let me bring you guys a little closer. There we go. That's better. Oh, have a drink of water. Now, I suppose the big question is building the suspense. Do I have lunch now, which is quarter past one? I just had that big break from sort of 11 to 12, 8 at 12. Oh. Probably not. I think what I might do, because if I eat now and then I do that hill, um, I might get a cramp or just probably not the best idea to go up the hill with uh, a belly full of food. Water. Uh, definitely next time I come, I'm gonna bring a whole packet of hydrolytes. I've taken six hydrolytes. They count you like you take two at a time. And I took, I brought three sets thinking, oh, if I'll take one one day, one another day, and I'll have a backup set. Oh, but uh, yeah, I think that uh, I definitely should bring more hydrolyte and uh, because it's amazing how much fluid you go through. Well, I've gone through a lot of fluid this time. All right, as much as I want to have a big rest, we'll keep moving. I'll uh, head up this hill and we'll uh, see how we go. Hopefully it's gradual, that's what I'm hoping for. I told you guys I was now on a trail. This is a goat's trail. I'm pretty sure that little gap there is the uh, where we've got to go. Over that side, I was looking at that and I'm like, that's like a 50 or 60 meter drop off there. I thought I had to go around the outside. If I survive this hike, I'll be doing well. This is so sketchy. Little update. That, not the path. That, the path. I went the wrong side of the rock. <sighs> Having said that, I'm gonna climb that. Oh yeah! Well it's about two o'clock. I'm not gonna lie, um, this track is absolutely destroying me. I'm literally going about 10 meters and I've got to take a breath, have a few breaths, a little rest, go 10, 15 minutes more. I've lost the trail maybe four times as I've been going over like rock crevices and stuff like that. And then I, I get back on it, because I got the GPS and that's fine. GPS is down to, I think, 30 or 40%. So it should be okay. Once I get to the top of this, I'll be okay. But I'm just going to uh, just take a break. Because I'm, not that I'm feeling lightheaded, but I'm, I'm exhausted. And uh, I don't want to keep pushing myself too hard. I haven't quite got phone reception yet. I, um, <laughs> not that I'm in trouble, but I'm like, hmm, I might just want to update Joanne where I am as soon as I get phone reception, just in case. Um, yeah, Whew. I am, I can literally lay down and have a sleep. Well, I'm not, not asleep, there's nowhere to sleep, it's all rocks. But uh, yeah, I'm definitely tired. I'm gonna have a good break here now, I think, get some water into me. Um, 
see what else I've got to eat and then I'll, uh, I'll tackle another section. I'm probably about just over a third of the way up the hill. Maybe half, maybe half. I'll tell myself half. And uh, yeah, hopefully it starts to flatten out. Once I get to the top, I'll be very pleased. All right, I've made it up another maybe 50, 75 meters. I looked on the GPS before and I'm well and truly past the halfway point. Um, yeah, I'm in Struggle Street. It's getting to the point now where I, I've got a stick as a walking, as in like a walking pole, using the tripod as the other one. And uh, yeah, I take a couple of steps and every time I come to like where I've got to like climb up heavy, or a large bit, I've got to like go, okay, right, two sticks, lift the legs. Ooh. Oh, looking across at the other uh, ridge lines, yeah, I'm definitely very close to the top. So hopefully, not much longer. But I'm going to take another break, rejuvenate, have a drink, and then we'll go on. A uh, bit off way more than I can chew. Ouch. All right, well, lo and behold, I made it to the top. I mean, I'm not at the very, very top, but I'm at the top of the really steep bit. I'm, uh, oh, hello, stick. Um, I think I've got like, we're at like 475 meters. I think we sort of undulate now between 475, 500, and back down again. Like, you know, that sort of range. But uh, I'm just pleased that the ground has left. I mean, we're still climbing ever so slightly, but oh, compared to what we were doing, I was in dire straits. I was like, holy mackerel, 20 steps, breath, 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 rest on the sticks. Ah, Oop. still back there, yep. Um, but now that I'm up here, I don't care about making time. Now I just care about making it. I'm already thinking about where the closest McDonald's is. Big fat Big Mac. Oh, I think a Fanta. Maybe even a Sunday. Oh, maybe a thick shake. Oh, maybe a thick shake and a Sunday. Replace all these calories. Mmm. Get all those sugars back into me. At that last break, I'm not sure if I videoed anything. I um, was like, oh, I've got to find something to eat. Sorry guys, got to swap arms. My arms are tired from holding. Um, I found some trail mix. Totally forgot I had it in there. And I was like, yay! So I cracked open the trail mix. Had some of that. That gave me some energy. I had about half of it. And then I'll uh, keep the rest of it just in case. I have all of it. It was quite a lot anyway, so yeah. But uh, here yeah, we'll uh, keep trekking up here and hopefully get to the top soon. Well, it's actually looking pretty good, guys. We, um, it's starting to flatten, well, I literally say it's starting to flatten out. Well, it's flattened out for a while, but uh, what I've found is, uh, um, we're just actually literally going down a little decline here now. But uh, yeah, I'll just check the GPS. It shouldn't actually be much longer. And um, I think we're gonna come out on that four-wheel drive track that, uh, we were on on the way in and then I think we go between those two houses it's uh, nice and breezy which I'll tell you what I do not mind because theoretically today we're supposed to be 31 and uh, you're not gonna get any complaints from me I'm not going under that oh, go through the gap around we go um, yeah if it had been like a full 30 a bright sunny 31 degrees in here whew, it would have been a bit interesting, I'll give you the tip. I mean, it's been a bit interesting anyway, but that would have made it substantially more interesting. Uh, 
something else I've noticed is there's lots of poo, scat, whatever you call it, animal droppings. And I think there must be, um, when I first saw them, I was like, oh, it's that dog dropping. And then I realized, oh, I think they must be wombat droppings because they seem to be around a lot. And then wherever they are, the wombat or the animal or whatever has had a dig at the ground to try and cover it. So, yeah. It's windy. Yeah, see, here's some of those droppings. Droppings just there, and then you can see, obviously, they've dug at the ground just there where that rock is. But uh, see, stacks of that around the place. Oh, all right. So apparently I've got one more hill in me. The four-wheel drive track apparently is just up there. Literally on the GPS it said 100 meters. And I was like, oh cool, it's just up here. And I looked up and I was like, oh, it's all uphill. You're killing me, man, come on. Oh, thank goodness for that. Oh, only took me two rests to get to the top of the hill. Was it Blackwood Rangers track? You suck. Oh, now we're on four-wheel drive track. Oh jeez. All right, topped up my water. The uh, Camelback was empty, so, well not empty, but almost. So I uh, topped it up with about two liters. The uh, water filter is now pretty well empty. And I'm gonna put the pedal in the middle because I reckon there's a storm blowing in over there. Oh jeez. Could anything, no, I'm not gonna say it. I'm not gonna say it. Let's just get back to the car. All right, literally 50 meters after I uh, started walking again, I'm over the hill and saw that. That's where we're going. But I think I'm gonna go where that car is over there and cut through. I'm cutting down as much distance as I can. Alrighty, we're up to Fox Gully Track, which is off to our left, but we're not taking that. We're going to the right. I will double check the GPS to make sure this isn't where I wanna to go to get to the road. Yeah, no, that's not it. Down here we go. Oh yeah, this is looking good. Our cow, cow track and a little blue blaze. And this, if memory serves me correctly, will be that horse farm that had the, uh, the carrots in the tree. But I'm pretty sure once we get here, we can turn left and go up the road, I think. Hey donkey, hey horse, hey llama. Oh, that'll be a llama, no worries. All right, yes, this is the car park. Turn left, head up to the main road. So I turn left at that road, and I'm going up towards the main road now, and there are legit a couple of old train carriages here. A guard carriage? Guard booth? Guard cabin, maybe? Oh, the old 433M. Do you wonder how old those are? I reckon I rode on one of those when I was a kid and I reckon I would have been, geez, be 40 years ago. No, I mean, not long, 38 years ago. Wow, all right. Down here to the main road, turn right, up to the car. Oh, well, I'm almost back to the main road. Um, just gonna go up the big hill now, which looks very big, I'll be honest. I'm not sure if I made the right decision going this way. We'll wait and see. Oh, now I've got less than two k's to go. It looks like it's all uphill. Beautiful view though. Yeah. Oh, we're getting closer. The wind is crazy. It's turning right into the uh, tower track road. And then we should be, oh, some of these bins flipped over. Oh. Oh, going down, 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 down. Up, 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 up. Oh. Oh. Down, 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 down. Oh, up, 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 up. Oh, that's a bit rough. Oh. There we go. Oh, somebody's recycling bin lid opened. All right. I hope we've only got a little bit to go. A little bit to go. A little bit to go. I am flat out exhausted. That's right. We'll make it. All right, this wind is blowing a gale. But there's a tower just over the hill. Oh yeah.
holy mackerel. Oh, well, I made it. What is it? 5.30. Oh, I'm not sure how far we went. Uh, let me check the, uh, yeah, I'm going to leave that open for it. Let's mirror in the car. So it reckons the GPS, eight hours, 55 minutes, 12.7 kilometers. Gee whiz. 29 minutes a kilometer. So you were basically doing 29 minutes a kilometer is what I was averaging. Oh no, that's maybe that's what I was doing last. I don't know what I averaged. What's that? Oh, I don't know. Well, that was hard. I'm not gonna lie. Not gonna lie. Definitely, definitely hard. Oh, it's hot. Um, I'm not sure I made the right decision doing that coming off that other road and coming out the main road and then coming back up this way, they were very long, um, it, was, it was very, great. well, yeah, it was gradual, but it was very long, like kilometers long. And then the wind, that crosswind towards the end, holy mackerel, I was trying to walk, and I'm getting blown across onto the grass and I'm exhausted, so my legs were getting blown as well, so that wasn't great. All right, I am going to give Joanne a quick call, let her know I made it home. I made it back to the car at least. Um, so I'll tell you what, the cruise control is going to get a workout. Oh, my legs are on fire. Oh, I wonder if I'm having dinner at home or getting something on the way, because it's so late, I'm not going to get home. Oh, 5.30, 6, 30, 7.30, oh, it's late. Yeah, maybe I'll get dinner on the way home. All right, guys, well, I hope you have enjoyed this video. It was my first attempt. And I think we can all agree that I probably bit off a little bit more than I could chew. Uh, quite honestly, <laughs> I reckon I almost died a couple of times. Up on the cliff, uh, and then the other one at the end this afternoon, coming home, coming up that big hill, I was, yeah, I didn't want to say anything to Joanne, like I sent Joanne a text message to let her know where I was, but yeah, I was, uh, that was a bit, uh, worrying and then just getting up here then oh all right well home time if you guys enjoyed this video please drop a comment down below um i'd really appreciate subscribing and comments oh the next video i will do one <laughs> it won't be that route holy mackerel um it will be something much uh much more sedate let's just say that all right Home time.